Hi everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap. And this is kind of like part two of my two lemon soaps. I've got two different lemon fragrances and I didn't want to make them look exactly the same. So how do you change the colors or the swirls to make two different types of soap that are similar that have the same basic notes that kind of give you the same kind of colors? So as you saw in the previous video, and I'll put a link to that at the end of this video, uh, for the making of fresh lemon sugar type, I decided that the fresh signified to me something that's kind of clean and, and fresh. So I chose blue because blue reminded me of um, like icebergs and something kind of wintry and fresh and clean. Whereas this one is a foodie type of soap. It's called lemon curd. And usually we don't think of food or something appetizing with blue. So I chose purple for this one. And so you, this one's gonna look a little different because of the purple in it. So I wanted to get that explained to you before we started this one. And I, of course I have a color tutorial before we start. So let's start. So let me bring you back to the same study. And uh, oops, I smeared that a little bit, but you can see where the yellow went into the blue where we have a little bit of a greenish color in there because blue and yellow make green, of course. So I'm still gonna have a yellow. I think it's gonna still be a pastel of yellow. It sort of makes the um, contrast um, not quite as strong. So if you put like a bright yellow next to a bright opposite color, you're going to get something that's a little more stark, a little bit more dramatic, and if that's what you want, then you'll know to keep the colors pure. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. So in this case, I'm going to have some purple that I mix with white. So it comes across as a, like a wisteria color. Something like that. So I'm going to use my purple mica and mix it with some titanium dioxide to get that color. Probably want it maybe a little bit more white. And then for the absolute contrast, I'm going to have something that's a little bit darker, not a little, actually not a little bit, but quite a bit deeper. I think those three colors together will give me the look that I want for this lemon curd. So I think that um, lemon curd, because it is a food type of scent, that purple is a more pleasing color for a foodie type of soap than blue is. And even if you think of blueberries, they're, um, they're not really blue, they're more purple. And this is why we hardly see any, anything, as far as food is concerned, uh, a blue color, because it's not known to happen in the natural world in food stuff quite as often. So this is going to be the reason why I want this color scheme for the lemon curd soap. But for my fresh lemon sugar type, I'm using this. And sometimes we even associate sugar with a blue cast to it. Um, don't know why. But uh, so you can see the difference there. And I said that um, I would show you what it would look like if you just used the pure color so here's that pure yellow. Next to a pure purple. You can see that that's quite a dramatic look. So, so to soften that contrast, you can add some white to each of those and you get something that is more compatible. Um, okay, so let's get started with the making of the soap. So here are my micas. I just have a little bit of basic purple. It's a color joy mica from Rustic Essentials. I want just a little bit of that for a nice accent. And this is the same colorant with um, some titanium dioxide. You can see that it's already been blended with water and it's on the bottom, but it'll mix up when I add the soap to it. And here's my color joy basic yellow mica. And I mixed up a bunch of that with my batch oils because that's going to be my base color, the majority of the soap, so I need a bunch of that to turn that yellow. 
Okay, I've already mixed up my soap batter. So I'm going to add it to my purple with some titanium dioxide in there. Not a whole lot. And even less of that same color. Just a pure version of that because I want that to be a dark accent. And then the rest of that is going to be yellow. So that's, of course, a lot more mica mixed up. I'll get that. I'll get all of that in. Okay. Okay, that's the right amount. So I want it a little brighter than it's going to be in the soap because it's going to fade just a little bit. But this has been a really good yellow so far. I really like it. I've had trouble with yellows in the past because they end up not being yellow by the, the time the soap is saponified. So this is Color Joy Mica Basic Yellow. Okay. This fragrance is behaving too and it smells really good. It's not a really artificial type of lemon that I don't care for so much. I think the rest I'm just gonna not stir and just... So let me blend the yellow first. I want it to be Pretty liquid for my soap. That's the Color Joy Basic Purple with some titanium dioxide. So you can see that turned into a nice lavender color. And as I said, I just want a little bit of that pure purple. That's pretty intense. So if you use that as a base in your soap, it's going to really turn the washcloth purple. Just stirring some of the bubbles and checking its consistency. It's perfect right now. Do the same with this. This will be the thickest one because of the titanium dioxide, which absorbs water quite a bit. Okay, and what I'm hoping for are some nice, thin drop swirls. And then I'm going to use a chopstick for that to me. Wipe that up. Okay, so let's pour almost all of that in. Might need some for the top. This is thickening up most, so let me get almost all of that in and just save some of that for the top. This is a relatively easy pour. And I'm going to stir this so it's a little more liquid. It's doing just fine. Going deep, so I'm pouring from high up. Go on the edges. the yellow in there.
Then the lighter purple. I'll get that to one side. This is what I call planned sloppiness. Is that uh, not being too concerned about the soap not going exactly where you want it, but keeping in mind that you don't want to cover all the colors if you want them all to show in the top. And I like that random design. Sometimes they come out better than anything you try to do. Now this pure purple. I don't have very much of it so I don't care if that goes everywhere. So it's splattered. You'll see the kind of effect that gets when I scroll the top. And again purple and yellow going really well together because they contrast the, the best since they're complementary colors. Okay, so this really behaved well as I said, and I'm going to now, perfect swirl for this is to do both diagonals. And there we go. So happy how that came out. I don't think I ever had a soap with that exact color combination in this roll, so it's nice to see something different. And let's bring you back for the cut. Okay, couldn't wait to cut this one. And I realized that um, usually I try to replicate with the colors what the fragrance is telling me. Um, in this case, lemon curd, but um, the first thing that came to mind was yellow with a white drop in it, and to me that wasn't uh, bold enough for this beautiful citrus lemon smelling fragrance. So I thought the bright yellow and its complement of purples would be okay. And then just have to have a stretch of the imagination with the lemon curd idea to consider why the purple's there. And then I really wanted to make sure that the dark purple was really an accent. So to do that and incorporate enough other purple, I added the same purple with some titanium dioxide so I'd have really more dimension with the two different kinds of purple and I really do like that. Looks like it's raining purple. I have not had really great luck in the past with the yellows and it's probably just because I shy away from using yellow and soaps before for some reason but um, getting all these lemony fragrances made me sort of try to use yellow a bit more and then I think I'm getting better at it just because I'm using it more so it seems to me that yellow needs just a little bit more mica to make the yellow really pop, which is to me really unusual because you would think that a yellow mica in a medium such as soap, which is a little bit yellow already, would not be an issue. But wow, I really like that. I don't think I've ever gotten a drop swirl that fine. So I think that has to do with the chopstick swirl after. And of course, 
more importantly, that the batter was very liquid when I poured it. Wow, look at that. So let me just keep cutting these. What else did I learn with this? Since every soap has a little lesson for me, and people, thank you very much for your compliments, but you know, half the things I do are always experimental, and I don't jump off the deep end and do something way out of line, but I take a little bit of learning and then apply it to the next soap and get some new ideas and then try something a little bit more of more out there and then I I don't get bored with what I do and then it's about time to go back to old techniques that I haven't done before or learn a new one on YouTube I do have some fragrances that didn't work really well with cold process soap because it either accelerated or riced. So I think instead of wasting those fragrances, I'll go back and do some melt and pour. So if you'd like to see that, let me know because I'm kind of not wanting to do that in a way. I like to use melt and pour to make some embeds, but I haven't made but I haven't made just a like a loaf of melt and pour for a long time. I am going to be participating in a local beer festival been doing this probably this is going to be the fifth year that I've done this in an area of San Diego called Bankers Hill and I don't have the date in front of me right now it's like March 20 something so I think I could possibly make some melt and pour for that because my own inventory of cold process is lower than I'd want it to be and as you know, melt and pour as soon as it cools down and rested for a day, it's ready to use as opposed to a cold process soap that needs at least four weeks to cure. We'll take a look at one of these and how the colors worked out. So there's my yellow as the base and then the Majority of the drop swirl was in that light purple with just a little bit of that deep purple swirled in add more more interest Some of these paired cuts are forming these great butterfly like Swirls so I'll try to photograph them in pairs and someone asked, why are you cutting your soap so thinly? I think I completely forget to say that this is part of a commissioned order that's going to be used as samples or sample sizes. So they are cut more thinly. But I should probably make some full-size bars with this as well when I get the chance. Very uh, psychedelic.
as always, thank you for tuning in and watching. Some of the comments that I get are just so motivating for me because um, of how nice they are about what people see in these videos and I appreciate that. Try to do a good job. And I thank you all for subscribing as well. Just lets me know that there's someone else out there that are interested in these and that's encouraging. So I think that's about the extent of the cuts for today. I'll just show you this soap and I'll continue to cut it once I say goodbye. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later. Bye everybody.